G'day there guys, you look good today, just saying. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, subscribe if you haven't, check that subscribe button down south, and have a bloody good time. Thank you. Posted by user throwawaywedif, titled, Am I the a-hole for taking a much needed vacation in the middle of my wife's grief? At around 6pm Tuesday night, my mother-in-law died. Doctors had discovered that she had an inoperable brain tumour around 5 months ago, and we pretty much knew that there was no hope. My mother-in-law had been in hospice, and it was a good facility, but my wife still went into total zombie mode. So it's been 5 months of non-stop work and no affection or appreciation for any of my efforts. My wife does nothing but eat pre-packaged microwave meals, so I have to cook dinner for our 15-year-old daughter. She never makes an effort, to the point of wearing sweats even to work. And worst of all, she went from showering every day to maybe twice a week. My daughter made my wife a cake for her 45th birthday three and a half months ago. I knew that my 45th birthday, which was yesterday, would be given no attention because doctors had said, again, that this was the end, and my wife has done nothing but cry when she hears that. I called some of my family and friends, who all live in Arizona, and they said I deserve to have a good birthday. So I agreed to go back home for the week to celebrate and catch up. My wife got furious when she heard I was going, and she started begging and crying that she would control her outward expressions of depression and grief if I stayed, and said that she felt it was true this time, even though we had like four false alarms regarding her mother before. In addition, her mother and I have never been close, and I know I don't land anywhere close to the top people she wants to see before she passes. My wife said she'll work to be less distant, and she doesn't care if we lose the money I had already booked on the plane ticket. I told my wife that I didn't need her to pretend to act less distant, and I know she's grieving in a way that I've never grieved before, but that I was no help to her right now, and was so fatigued that I needed a break. So I ended up flying down to Arizona, and on Tuesday night, I get the call that my mother-in-law had passed away from my daughter. She said she's staying at her best friend's house, and she's perfectly fine. However, my wife texts me and says that I betrayed our wedding vows. I asked if I should come back, and when we were expecting a lot of old family friends for my birthday, and my return flight is on Sunday. My wife says to do whatever I want, and that if I'm expecting my old work out every day and dresses up every day wife back when I come home, I will be disappointed. Am I the a-hole for taking this trip because I needed to do something for myself or else I'd go crazy? I will be flying back Sunday, but I know my wife will be barring me from helping with the funeral. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I might be the a-hole for not dropping everything and going back after hearing her mother died. However, I know my wife wouldn't let me help with anything regardless. I think it's incredibly selfish to, you know, fly away from your wife while her own mother is dying. The reason you gave that you wanted to have a good birthday just because your family and friends wanted you to come over there is not a good excuse. You obviously don't care about your wife's emotions, the way you've phrased this post, and the way you act so nonchalantly saying, oh, uh, I'll come back now, how's it all going over there? If you really cared, you would have stayed there with her and not made it an issue. You would have communicated with her in a healthy way, stayed by her side, even if she's not going to let you help with anything regardless. Obviously, your presence there is a stone, a rock that she needs in her world. Instead, you're helping drag that rock in her stomach down to rock bottom levels, pumping up her anxiety and making her feel absolutely betrayed. Pretty disgraceful in my opinion, you're the a-hole. In the comments, you're the a-hole. All you do is complain. It's exhausting to cook dinner for a child who is perfectly capable of cooking dinner for herself? You're upset that your wife isn't wearing makeup and nice clothes? This is exhausting for you? Too bad. It's not about you. I am fairly certain you have ended your marriage with your actions. 
I hope Opie's wife can pull herself out of her grief enough to start divorce proceedings. Yikes. Plot twist. The dying mum's final wishes to her daughter were, lawyer up and crush your husband. Way to make this entire situation completely about yourself. You wanted a good time, so decided to abandon your wife during possibly the worst time of her life, then didn't even go back after her mother had died because you wanted a birthday party? Yes, you're the a-hole. He abandoned his wife and daughter in their time of grief, and traveled during a pandemic that's killing thousands of people every day. And that just proves again what an ass he is. At first I thought you were saying that it had been five months since her mother died, but now I see that she was in hospice for five months, and she only died a few days ago. You were the a-hole with the cherry on top. Good point there. I also thought it had been five months grieving, but then I read your comment and reread the thread. It's not even a week yet, holy mother! This guy is the a-hole of the highest order. I hope he's welcomed by divorce paper. The wife deserves much better. But she didn't dress nice and cook for him, and it was his special big boy birthday. That's basically murdering him. You're the a-hole. You will have many birthdays. If you live to 85, you have another 40 to look forwards to. Your wife has one mother. So you really should have been there to support your wife, even if you feel nothing for your mother-in-law. Honestly, this is the sort of thing that would be a major question in whether or not your wife wants to continue being married. Posted by user, background car 250. Titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my stepsister why I don't eat with them? So my stepfather and step-siblings are really mad at me right now. I'm 15 and haven't been eating family dinners for about two months now. They finally started asking me why, and I told them. I'm a fairly late diagnosis celiac. As a child, I got put on so many restrictive diets while doctors tried to figure out what was wrong that I never really got a taste for most typical American foods. I also ended up having a lot of anxiety about getting sick after reading, so it took me a long time to even eat homemade gluten-free bread, and that's the only carb I really eat. Most of my diet is grilled and baked or sautéed proteins, vegetables, and fruit. The only people who understand what gluten actually is are my mother and I, so I don't eat anything that I, she, or a restaurant with an actual gluten-free menu didn't make or see made start to finish. My mum married a man with two kids who all eat a standard American diet. We were doing family meals at first, with her and I cooking a separate meal. Most of the time, I can't eat what they eat because gluten, but even the things I could technically eat just look disgusting to me. Like fried foods and barbecue, and things with a ton of cheese, it just looks like it's rotting or gone off. They also all have terrible table habits and chew with their mouths open. Looking at it and watching the meat was disgusting and made it hard for me to eat my own food. I always have been barely over underweight and was starting to lose weight. So after talking to my doctor, we decided that I had to eat separately because I needed to eat. My stepsister finally confronted me on it and I told her that I couldn't handle looking at their food or how they eat it and had to just go somewhere else to eat my food. She got in my face about being a part of a family and accepting them and we got into it, which ended in me saying it was probably a good thing that I had them to show me what I didn't want to be, and at least I could wear the clothes that I wanted. She's the same height as me, and at least 250 pounds. She started crying and left. Now even my mom is mad at me. Am I the a-hole? I just wanted her to leave me alone about it. You were doing so well until you decided to fat shame someone who was just asking you why you can't be there with the family and eat. I wonder if you've told them the real reasons why before, or if you've just been brushing it to the side and saying, oh, I just, you know, I just don't feel like it, oh, I'm just not comfortable with it, yada yada yada. I can and I also can't see why you would fat shame them to get them to leave you alone. There's a myriad of other ways and strategies that you can adopt to get someone to leave you alone. This is more than just normally hurting someone's feelings. She started crying and left and yeah, you, you got what you wanted, but you suck for it. 
I get that she shouldn't have confronted you the way she did, but these things happen, and she's at fault for this one as well. I'm not sure if the rest of the family is, it doesn't seem like they're forcing you into anything. She's the one that has a problem here, she did it in a way that was unacceptable, you did this in a way that was unacceptable. Everyone sucks here. Now in the comments, DZQWAP Shushnubit says, I was with you up until the above. As I think you could probably imagine, if you can be objective enough to read your own words back to yourself, and imagine you're a stranger reading them with no associations about the parties involved to cloud judgement. Clearly, your stepsister sucks for confrontationally getting into your face and not letting it go when you made it clear you just wanted to eat on your own. But then, to put it in almost poker terms, you saw her suck and lowered it. Everyone sucks here. This is one of those ones where the OP's a-holeness comes in at the very end. I'm really glad I read all the way through, or I'd have missed the botting shaming entirely. You're the a-hole for making commentary about her weight and clothing restrictions. You're right about not having to eat with them, or watch their bad habits. I'd go with you're the a-hole. I'm sick of people who use their anxiety, or whatever issue they have, as an excuse for being rude and bratty. Agreed. If it takes that much context to explain why they behaved badly, it's usually a sign that they were rude as hell. OP's stepsister didn't get to hear that entire monologue about why OP has a messed up relationship with food. She just got shouted down and insulted for stumbling onto a sensitive subject about which she knew very little. Unless the stepsister was being aggressive in her questioning, this is a straight you're the a-hole. Sometimes I think people get confused about this. There may be an understandable reason that someone is acting like an a-hole, but it doesn't change the fact that they acted like an a-hole. And Webby Vanderquack says, Everyone sucks here. Your stepsister's words were insensitive, but I think you crossed a line when you said they showed you what you didn't want to be, and implicitly insulted your sister's body weight. It sounds more like you're disgusted with these people than what they eat, and you might need to think that through. And Type 1 Error says, You had me until the end. You have every right to eat separately from the rest of your family. Your stepsister should not have confronted you the way she did, but the body shaming was a low blow. Everyone sucks here. OP said the stepsister confronted her about it, but OP does not specify any further relative to what was said by the stepsister up front, if anything. It could have been a relatively benign question asked by the stepsister, and it could have come from a positive place. Maybe stepsister wanted to make sure that OP is being included, should OP want to be included. And then she felt rejected by OP's statements. It's pretty harsh to tell someone not only does their food disgust you, but the way they eat also disgusts you. And it disgusts you so much that you can't be in the room with them while they eat. It's completely unnecessary to say these things. Even if their eating habits are relatively gross, there's a way to approach this without making people feel disgusting. I think stepsister is potentially in the wrong as well, but I'm not sure yet that they are an a-hole. My verdict is you're the a-hole. Posted by user AITA Gambling Funds, titled... Am I the a-hole for gambling half of my kids' college funds and winning? Okay, I know that the title sounds horrible, but hear me out. About a week ago, a group of friends and I took a trip to Vegas, and for the record, we all got tested before we went out. I'm looking for a judgement on this specific thing, not on me taking a vacation. Huh, bad luck buddy, you came to Reddit. The casinos have just opened up recently and my friends and I have always enjoyed a little bit of gambling, so we decided to check one out. I usually have a specific fund dedicated to gambling, so I don't use up any of our savings, but most of that fund ended up being put towards rent during quarantine, since my girlfriend got laid off work. Now, here is where I think I might be the a-hole. It had been over a year since I gambled last, and I really wanted to gamble. Any other gamblers out there reading this post will get it. I didn't want to take away from the house fund, or from our grocery fund, so I decided that taking money from my kids' college funds would be the best option. One of them is 14, and the other is 11, so there was still plenty of time for me to get the money back before actually going off to college. And I ended up winning. 
I kept all of the money that I gambled, and I ended up making a profit of about a quarter of the fund. I called my girlfriend and excitedly told her the news, but she asked where I'd gotten the original money from. I told her, and she freaked out. She screamed at me, told me that she was going to tell the kids how immature I was, and hung up on me. I know that it was a little bit irresponsible, but I don't really see the issue. If I had lost the money, it might be a different story, but I won, so I don't get why there's a problem. Now my kids have even more money to put into their college fund, and I got to gamble like I wanted to. It's been three days since that conversation, and she hasn't responded to any of my calls. I'm getting really sick of reaching out to her when I don't think I did anything wrong, but my flight home is soon, and I don't want her to tramp about me not apologizing when I get home. But do I even have anything to apologize for? So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Edit, I don't think you guys get it. I only gambled about $30,000 and now me and my family are all better off because of it. Don't you guys understand that I won? I accept my judgement, but I disagree. Sorry about reading his Reddit edit, but I just wanted you guys to get it. He gambled 30k of their money. 30k is a new car. 30k is a house deposit for some. 30k is a lot of money to these families, and him to say that it wasn't that much, I only gambled about 30k? That shows an obvious disconnect from gambler mentality and normal people mentality. The fact that you're gambling, there is a much higher chance that you lose that money than keep it. And the ends here definitely do not justify the means. I'm surprised you told your wife as soon as you did. I guess it's admirable that you were very honest. I give you brownie points for that. You were honest, but you're also ignorant. Very ignorant of the chances you were taking there. Congratulations on it paying off, but you deserve to get the cold shoulder from your wife because your actions were so reckless and dangerous. You're the a-hole. In the comments, Bloody Romance 1313 says, You're the a-hole. You could have lost. Your girlfriend is out of a job and you gambled badly needed money on a one and a million shot. You need to get on your knees and apologize. And you've repeatedly said you don't want to be judged for traveling during the pandemic, but using up your savings during a pandemic? Not a good look. I know, right? Major, you're the a-hole. You never gamble more than you're willing to lose. Were you really willing to lose 30k? That's a huge amount. I could really do with 30k USD. That's almost 40k Aussie. Maybe I'll repay you with interest, maybe not. Willing to risk it? The odds are better than they were at the casino. Is there a way to indicate you're being sarcastic? <laughs> Slash S, buddy. PP Poo Poo Lover 09 says, You're the a-hole. You need to see a counselor. This seems like an addiction. If you're willing to F others' lives up for your own gain, sure. You won this time, but the next time you gamble, in all likelihood, you're going to lose big time. Definitely gambling addiction. My dad's gambling problem and alcoholism ruined our family and put my mom into serious debt that she spent years trying to dig out of. She did and managed to put me and my sister through college. You're the a-hole. You took a huge risk with money that wasn't yours to gamble with, not to mention taking a huge risk with your health and the health of your family, and I think you should probably look into getting treatment for gambling addiction. Edit to add, in response to your edit to add, only 30k is a huge amount to steal from your own children. Yes, you won this time, but what if you hadn't? Stop trying to justify your selfish actions. You're not making yourself look any better. Get help. Posted by user Jettaboy04, titled... Am I the a-hole for calling my brother a jealous dropout? I am in the process of retiring from the military after a 23 plus year career, and my spouse and I are looking to move to Texas, which our family knows about. The other day I posted on my Facebook that we had begun the home search process and narrowed down roughly where we wanted to move. Most of my friends and family are of course excited and happy, though they do wish we would move closer. Family and in-laws live relatively close in either GA, SC, or NC, so easy to visit. 
but they understand our reasoning in moving to Texas with the numerous veteran benefits. On the post, a couple of friends were asking what kind of house we're looking at, and I replied, 4 plus bed, 2 plus bath, 2,500 square foot minimum. For some reason, this seems to have struck a nerve with one of my brothers, who begins questioning why we want such a big house with just my spouse and I, as we don't have kids being a same-sex couple. I initially explained that we would have our master bedroom, a guest room, and since my spouse works from home, he can set up a room as an office like we have now, and then use another room for his video games and crafts. Currently, his hobbies and work are all in one room, but we feel separating the two would give him a break from his work and playtime, so he doesn't feel like he spends all day in that one room. Also, we've floated the idea of adopting, now that we won't be moving every couple of years with the military. I thought that would be it, but no. My brother then proceeded to rant about how him and his girlfriend and her toddler live just fine in a microhome. It's a converted storage shed that resembles a house from the outside, and that all that extra space is going to be higher utility bills, taxes, and just wasted space. At this point, I was irritated and replied, Quit being a jealous dropout. I've had to bust my ass for 23 plus years to get where I am. Maybe if you hadn't dropped out of high school, you wouldn't be living in a storage building and judging how I spend my check. My spouse and a couple of family members and friends said that I went too far and was an a-hole for that response, and that I should apologize. I don't feel like I owe an apology. Am I the a-hole? I feel like I want to be on OP's side, but I also feel at the same time that they went too far with what they said there. Quit being a jealous dropout, maybe if you hadn't dropped out of high school you wouldn't be living in a storage building. You really went for the heart in that one, and you really want to distract the fear of God into this man. And while that is a power play, and that's a good way of getting him to shut up, you obviously destroyed him where it didn't feel like you needed to destroy him in this instance. Maybe I'm missing context, but I can see he's just being frustrated because he's envious and jealous of you. And instead of, you know, kind of easing those tensions, you decided to smack him in the face when he was down. I can understand where he's coming from. I can understand why he's so envious, jealous, upset, and angry, but I can't see why he said that to you in the first place. He should have kept to himself. You shouldn't have gone so hard when he did it. If there's more context to be had here, like he went for you in a homophobic way, he started attacking you because you don't have kids, if I have context like that, I'd give it a not the a-hole one because it would have been deserved, but it seems like the way you've presented this, it wasn't warranted. And for that, I'm going to have to say everyone sucks here. In the comments, Bisklevert says, Everyone sucks here. Your brother is the a-hole because no one forced him to respond to your post and write a sob story about his life, and you should not have stooped down to his level and kicked him in the rear. It's one thing to have a shouting match at home. It's another to post it on social media. Not the a-hole. I'm sorry for hijacking the top comment, but I really need to get this story out for OP and for anyone else who can benefit from it. I'm pretty sure this will get downvoted, but still, I want to show you the perspective of the dropout brother. Disclaimer, I don't hate my dad. I love him and appreciate the hard work he puts in for our family. I hate how he damaged our inter-family relations by dropping out. Just like OP, my family has a similar situation. My dad's eldest brother studied well during his school and college years, is a branch manager in a big bank in our country today, government-run bank, so he'll get all the benefits after he retires in seven to eight years. My dad, on the other hand, dropped out of high school, never went to college, tried a few businesses here and there, remained unemployed for a few years, struggled a lot, and finally started a home-based travel agency. Both the brothers, my uncle and my dad, are married and have two kids each, all in the age range of 16 to 23. I'm 23 female. He's been running this business for about 20 years now and is still struggling. He works day in, day out, and busts his ass trying to run the travel company, but it still doesn't earn us a good income. We're able to do our basic expenses, but we're not able to save anything. I always hear him talking crap about his elder brother, my uncle, 
and picking up unnecessary fights over trivial matters with him, even when my uncle hasn't done anything to harm him directly or indirectly. My uncle is a shy and happy chap. He doesn't even bother us or my dad. Obviously, there's a few family issues here and there, but nothing majorly serious. My dad has so much resentment against him, and gets so jealous of him, his income, his lifestyle, etc., that sometimes he stops speaking with my uncle for years at a stretch, and forbids us to speak or hang out with him and his family, our cousins. The maximum we went without speaking to them was four years, and mind you, they live in the same building as ours, just one floor above us. Yet still, we were only allowed to say hello to them if we happened to pass them in the halls of the building. And why did he do all this? Why all the hate? Spewing negative stuff about them to me and my brother? All because he knows that he is a failure. And if he keeps loving and cordial relations with his brother, he won't be able to run from it anymore. He will have to face it, and he will have to change himself as a human being. Which I'm sure, you can see, is something that he definitely doesn't want to do. He's so full of ego, that neither will he improve or work on himself, nor will he learn from the success of his brother, our uncle. The reason I wanted to share this story here is because I want you to know that you are not wrong. You called your brother exactly what he is. A jealous dropout. And I really wish that somebody would have called my father that, if not in his 20s, then at least in his 30s. My dad is 50 years old now, so that he still would have some time to turn his life around. Or, somebody would have sat him down and explained to him that he should learn from his brother and make a good life for himself, instead of resenting his brother, using the garb of jealousy to hide his own failures, traumatizing himself, his wife, my mother, and his kids, me and my brother, in this whole process, by constantly spewing hate and blaming his failures on everybody else. OP, if you're still reading this, I just want to say that obviously you are completely not the a-hole, but your brother may not exactly be evil in this case as well. I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your brother, but it seems to me that he's not in a good place in life and could definitely use some guidance or intervention of sorts. Yes, it is his fault for dropping out of school, and thus not being able to build a strong foundation for a good life. However, I also know that amidst all the jealousy that your brother is showing, there is a huge amount of hidden appreciation that he has for you, and all that you've built. He could use your guidance, really. If you're okay with it, and if you're sure that he won't try to leech off of you, I hope you can help him out, guide him and help him build a better life, just how I wish my uncle would have guided and helped my high school dropout father build a better life. Warm hugs. Deleted says, Everyone sucks here. He was being a complete prat and should have minded his own business. You completely blew a gasket and went low. Worth looking at why his judgement and pettiness made you want to tear him apart rather than tell him to grow up or simply delete his comments. OP replies, yeah, I went for a low shot, but it wasn't just this one time he's done this. Anytime I or our other brothers post something positive from our lives, he swoops in with his negativity. Don't get it wrong, I'm not a classist. Every job in society is important for its own sake, and I believe in showing the same level of respect to a janitor as I would a CEO. We have tried to help him out. My other brother was going to pay for any cost associated with him going to the community college to complete their adult high school program, and I created a family shared Uber account so that he would have a ride to and from school. That stopped after two months when I started racking up charges from him taking Ubers to hang out with friends and whatever else. It's like he's comfortable with his life standings, but also doesn't like when others want more for themselves. I understand that you're frustrated with him, but your response does suggest classism. Calling someone a dropout as an insult does suggest that they are lesser because they didn't finish high school or college or whatever. I think you were justified in telling him that the size of your house is not his concern, but the way you phrased your response was out of proportion no matter what the history. If you and your brother are often like this, why not go low contact? Moving cross country seems like a great opportunity to do this. OP isn't wrong though and I don't see any classism in what he said. 
The brother could have joined the military or went to school. Shrug. It ain't OP's fault he worked for his staff. Brother needs to stop being a jealous ass. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down to the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.